Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know that this is a long anticipated video, at least for those of you who asked questions. Um, and to be honest, I already filmed this video and I accidentally deleted the footage. Other than that, I'm not gonna make excuses. I have a baby. It's just taking a long time to do things nowadays. I'm sorry. Okay, so today's video is going to be all about the questions that you guys asked me on my Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you totally should because I post lots of Instagram stories of my little baby. I am obsessed with him. I love him so much. He's gonna be 12 weeks coming up soon and I can't even believe it. That's almost three months old, you guys. Like, oh my God, time flies so fast, but I basically asked you to ask me any questions you had about pregnancy, um, motherhood, labor and delivery, baby things, um, and I got a few questions that I want to answer for you guys. I did answer some of them on Instagram, but that was a long time ago, so it's actually going to be kind of interesting to see like if my answers changed since then. We'll see. Okay, first question is, would love to know your mo must have postpartum supplies. I actually posted a video all about this. This was one of the first videos that I posted after I had my baby. So I will link that video down below for you guys. But basically I will say the Frida Baby Mom Washer uh, postpartum uh, bounce back leggings that I got from Motherhood Maternity. Next question is, do you have to supplement with formula? I was sad I couldn't breastfeed the way I wanted to. Uh, yes, and I was completely torn apart that I couldn't breastfeed the way I wanted to. It actually is what triggered my postpartum depression, which I have been dealing with. I would like to maybe film a video all about that if you guys would be curious to kind of hear about my journey here, about how things have been panning out. Uh, but breastfeeding was so hard, is so hard, um, and it completely tore me apart for weeks months that I couldn't feed my baby the way that I had always dreamed of feeding him. But yeah, we do for, we do um, supplement with formula. In fact, now his diet is mostly formula just because he needs to eat more and more and more and my body is only producing so much and it's not enough to keep up with what he needs. So we do supplement with formula. The next question is how do you sleep at night? I have a newborn and I'm so sleep deprived. Um, it took a long time for him to get on a sleep schedule. In fact, I just recently posted about this on my Instagram. He just recently started sleeping like six, seven, eight hours a night, which is fantastic. And I'm so thankful that he's already sleeping that long, like at the age that he is. Uh, I think honestly, what got us there at the first month, the first like six weeks is a complete mess. Like don't even try to put your baby on a sleep schedule like it's just a hot mess the first six weeks it's so hard um especially those first two weeks everything is so hard those first two weeks i was so sleep deprived and in fact sleep deprivation is the hardest part about having a newborn i will say because when you don't have sleep it completely messes up everything it makes you irritable it makes things harder to do it makes you frustrated um, it's just lack of sleep really does something different to your body on top of all the hormones that you're dealing with and your life being completely different. Like it's hard. I would say like try to get sleep in when you can. What my husband and I did, um, is we actually like sat down and made a schedule like a nighttime schedule. So I was like, okay, you wake up and take this feeding. I'll wake up and take this feeding. You wake up and take this feeding. Like we alternated back and forth and let the other person sleep through the feeding. Um, because in the beginning I was trying to fully breastfeed that we couldn't do that. But what I ended up doing was he would wake up, feed the baby and I would pump, which takes, you know, 15 minutes. Whereas breastfeeding takes sometimes an hour or so, especially with a brand new baby. So I would pump, go back to sleep, he would finish up with the baby, and then the next round he would sleep, I would do the whole thing. And so alternating really, really helps. Also in the morning, he would take the baby out of the room and let me just have everything, to my, like the bed to myself, the room to myself, complete silence, turn the white noise machine way up, and I, would, I was able to sleep for a couple more hours. Try to get sleep if you can. If you have somebody that can come over and watch the baby for an hour or two while you sneak in a nap, like do anything you can to get sleep because it gets better when you get sleep. I promise it's so much easier when you can sleep. Next question is how long did you have help at home after delivery? My mom was here for a whole month. Um, she was here, it was actually like, it was like five weeks. So she was here 
two weeks before my due date and then she left when he was three weeks old. So she was here for about two, uh, five full weeks and she helped a ton with like cleaning the house, cooking dinner, keeping things in order, laundry, taking care of the dogs. She helped so much. I honestly don't know how I would have maintained my sanity without my mom. Um, my sister was here for a week so she came when Lincoln was just a couple of days old and she was here for a full week she helped a lot so she's a labor and delivery nurse she used to be a postpartum nurse and so she helped so much with just like she helped me a little bit with breastfeeding and then just taking care of Lincoln so that I could get some sleep so there were times where I would just like hand him over to her and then like come back into my room and sleep for a couple of hours because I needed that sleep so desperately um, they both also also helped with grocery shopping and things like that making meals um, but after my mom left, Matt and I had no help, and we still haven't had any help, so it's just been us, and I kind of like it that way because we're figuring things out on our own. We don't have all the unsolicited advice. Um, I miss family, and I really wish there was family nearby, friends and family, but there's also an element of kind of like, it's kind of exciting to figure it out all on your own, you know what I mean? Next question is, has motherhood been everything, everything everyone said it would be? Uh, yeah, yes and no. I think it took me a long time, probably like 10 weeks, to feel normal again, to feel like myself again. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I did suffer slightly with postpartum depression and I'm still battling with it. And I think a lot of that stemmed from my life completely changing. And everybody says that to you. Everybody says your life's going to be different. Everybody says it's going to be hard. But I I didn't quite, n nothing can prepare you for it. Like, it's so hard, you guys. It is so hard. Um, your life is totally different. You're taking care of a baby. It's not like taking care of a puppy. It's, it's, it's a human, you know what I mean? And I went 31 years of my life with just having me to take care of and now having to take care of another thing. It's hard, your routines change. That was difficult for me, my daily routine. Um, Everything kind of goes out of whack for a while. Your house gets messy. Your clothes are dirty. Everything is just, it's just, you're kind of just trying to survive for a while. And it's hard. And it really, um, it took me a while to feel normal again and to discover my new normal. And so it is everything I've been wanting or everything that everyone said, though. It just took a while to get there. I will say having a baby is the most rewarding thing in the entire world to know that you created that, your body created that. You look at your baby and you're just like, holy cow. A, how did I do this? How did my body know how to do this? B, this is a miracle. It's magical, it's a miracle. You look at that baby, especially when the baby starts smiling. When Lincoln started smiling, like it just warms your heart and it makes everything so much better. Like who cares that I haven't slept in a week? My baby just smiled at me, you know, like it's rewarding, it's exciting. And now that he's getting older and I can see him grow and get bigger and stronger and doing new things, grabbing toys, tracking things with his eyes, starting to kind of roll over, tummy time, lifting up his head. I mean, these are all things and they're so minor, but they're so exciting and you just get so happy to see your baby do this. And I feel like as they get older, you're, it only gets better. You know, you're molding this person into everything that you've always wanted them to be. And it, I could go on forever, um, but yes, it is. It took me a while to get there, uh, but it is definitely everything everybody said it would be. <laughs> Next question is, what was the hardest part of delivery? How are you adjusting sending lots of love? Um, so I talked about how I'm adjusting. I finally feel normal again. <laughs> Took me a while. Um, as far as labor and delivery, the hardest part was the very, very end of labor and delivery, the very last part. So I did get an epidural. That was another question. Somebody asked me if I got an epidural. Um, I did. I got an epidural. But you still feel pressure when you have an epidural. In fact, you probably could stand up and walk around if you, if they let you, but they don't let you. Um, it just takes away the pain. It almost numbs and dulls the pain, but you still like feel things. And so I could still like tell when a contraction was coming. I could feel when it was happening. And that the last like two or three pushes was the absolute hardest because at that point, Lincoln was so far down in my birth canal, I guess crowning at that point, that it hurt so bad. Like it wasn't like a sharp pain. It was just like, I felt like I had to poop. 
<laughs> is the best way to explain it. And it was so painful. I remember saying like, oh my God, it hurts. Um, I feel like I have to poop. And, so I, and then the, the midwife was like, yeah, you're about to take the biggest poop of your life. <laughs> like, uh, but that was the hardest part was just the last couple of pushes. Also getting the epidural was a little bit difficult. It was all mental though. Like I was just, you know, the, oh my God, the needle's going to go in my spine. Uh, but the actual process of getting it wasn't that bad. It was just a mental thing. Um, next question is what advice L and D or postpartum postpartum can you give a first time mom about entering her third trimester? Third trimester is hard. Um, especially the last month is hard. You just feel large and heavy and everything hurts and you can't wait to see that baby. And like, you almost want the baby to come early because you're just over being pregnant and you're so excited to meet your baby. But I would say, and I'm sure everybody says this, but like try to enjoy the last week or so of like being able to sleep all you want and you have an excuse because you're pregnant. So just sleep all day if you can. Um, take the time to really sit down and like, you know, do the last minute organizing, organize the rest of the clothes in the nursery. Um, kind of get things together it's it's hard but like rest and just just buckle down and like get ready for the ride of your life because once that baby comes the first at least the first two weeks is total chaos it is exciting chaos and new but it is total chaos um so that's like the kind of like pregnancy advice i could give you as far as l and d advice goes so I'm trying to remember wet wipes were like huge for me I like used wet wipes for everything while I was in labor like to wipe my underarms to wipe my face so definitely bring like like almost like baby wipes like wet wipes with you also a fan I wish I had a fan and I didn't because I got really hot at a certain point and my husband was like fanning me with a piece of paper so if you have one of those like handheld fans I don't know that might work Next question is, how many outfits should you pack in your diaper bag? Um, honestly, at least at my hospital, and I think most hospitals provide you with every single thing you need for the baby. You literally could walk in there not even knowing you're pregnant, and the baby would be totally fine because the baby has everything it needs. They have clothes, they have like little shirts for them, swaddles, diapers, shampoo, lotion, everything. Um, so honestly, the only thing you need is your going home outfit. Unless you're planning on taking hospital pictures, like first 48 photos, then you might want to bring a couple of different outfits um, just for the photos. But other than that, you just need a going home outfit. I would suggest one newborn sized outfit and one zero to three month sized outfit just because you don't know what size the baby is going to be. But yeah, all you really need is one. Next question is, what would you say you need more of newborn clothes or zero to three months? So I talked about this a little bit in my like baby must have products or newborn must have products but everybody told me to not buy newborn size clothes because you never know how big your baby's going to be so newborn size clothes are technically supposed to fit babies up to eight pounds so if your baby weighs more than eight pounds theoretically they're not going to fit in newborn size clothes so everyone's like don't waste your money just buy zero to three months so i only had a couple of newborn sized things turns out I needed more than that. Um, I Lincoln wore newborn size clothes for six weeks. So I wish I had had more newborn size stuff to prepare. But to answer this question, definitely zero to three because they, he will wear zero to three month size clothes until he's three months or, you know, I think it's like 12 pounds or something like that. 13 pounds is what they're supposed to be when they move up to the next size. So you need more zero to three, but you, but don't, forget about the newborn size like at least prepare a little bit with the newborn size even if that means leaving the tags on and like returning them if your baby is too big i don't know i just know that i really wish i didn't have to go to the store when he was a week old to buy more newborn size stuff which is what i had to do i kind of wish i just had prepared him next question is can you talk about how long you were trying to get pregnant and anything that helped you I hesitate talking about this because I want to be so sensitive to the people who are struggling with fertility and who are trying to have babies. Um, I know that that is so common. And so I, I don't want to tiptoe around this, but I also just want to be sensitive and aware to that because I know so many people that are in that boat or were in that boat and I know how hard it is and I know that it is a struggle. We were very lucky. Um, we were very blessed. We were very lucky. I got pregnant 
two weeks after I stopped taking birth control. Um, so we were trying, we were planning. I downloaded an app called Flow, which like tracks your cycle and your fertile days and then your ovulating days. And it's obviously not exactly perfect because it doesn't like test your it's just like it goes based off of the last the first day of your last period and then it tells you like okay this is the day that you're probably ovulated ovulating and these are the days that you're highly fertile and so um i downloaded that app and when it said that i was highly fertile we just you know got busy every single day that it said i was highly fertile until it said that i ovulated and then I think we also, the day after that, we, you know, got busy. And, and then two weeks later, I had a positive pregnancy test. And I know that it's not that easy or simple for everybody, but that's what worked for us. Um, I have also heard, and I don't know if this is correct or not, and I'm not, I'm not an expert by any means, but I have heard that going off of birth control right after that, you are much more fertile. Um, I don't know why, I don't know the science behind it, but I've I've told this story to many people and a lot of people say that same thing happened to me. Or, yeah, that's because you're the most fertile when you stop birth control. And I'm like, I didn't know. And so, I don't know. We were very lucky. We were very blessed. Um, I hope that it's that simple next time for us and that we are that lucky next time we try for baby number two. Um, you know, maybe it won't, maybe it will, who knows. But if you are struggling with fertility, um, my heart is with you and don't give up. If you want to be a mom, you will be a mom. If it's your dream in life to be a mom, like don't ever give up because you will be one day. Um, next question is how was the feeling after giving birth? Genuine question mark. Uh, it's crazy. You guys, you're almost like in a blur, like a fog blur. And you're like, holy crap. Did this just happen? Like I felt like it, you almost feel like it's not real, you know, and everything just kind of like fogs out. You don't notice how many people are in the room. You don't see all the people staring at your lady bits. And all you can think about is just this baby in your arms. And it's just like, oh my God, did this thing just come out of me? Like that was one of the first things I thought of was like, this thing is huge. How did that come out of my body? Like, um, and then you kind of like cue into what's going on around you for a second. And I remember like looking at my husband and looking at my mom and I was like, oh my God, he's perfect. And then I was like, how are his toes? I don't know why, but I was just really anxious about his toes. Like, does he have all 10 fingers and all 10 toes? Um, so I remember asking like, what do his feet look like? And then my thought was like, oh my God, did I tear? Because I, for some reason I thought that I didn't tear because I had the epidural so I didn't feel much. I did tear by the way, but I was like, did I tear? And then I started to cue into like everything around me and I was like, oh my God, why is there so many people in this room right now? Like, and then you just, you just have all these thoughts going through your mind, but you constantly go back to this baby and you look at it and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, this is my baby. Like, it's just, it's strange. Um, next question is, did you deliver, did your delivery happen on the day they told you? No, my due date was September 5th and he was born on September 3rd. I started the laboring process on September 2nd, but I was induced. So my situation is a little bit different. I have a feeling if I wasn't induced, I probably would have gone past my due date, like well past my due date. But I don't know. I was already four centimeters dilated when I was induced, but he was still sitting really high in the birth canal. He hadn't dropped yet. So I don't know, but no. I was two days early. Next question is, were you prepared for your delivery? I was, and that's because I was induced and I was on a waiting list to be induced. And there was like a week and a half between the time that I was told, okay, you're going on the waiting list to be induced to the day that I got the call of, okay, come to the hospital. So it was like nine days of just preparation and anxiety and like, oh my God, it's coming. So I was probably more than prepared. I had the house clean, I had groceries done, I had this and that, and my mom was here, and everything was like so-so, and that's, I was like kind of lucky in that aspect because I was induced and I knew I was gonna be induced. But yeah, so I think I was prepared. I also think the only thing I would have brought in addition to what I packed in my hospital bag was a fan, which I already talked about. Next question is, how was your delivery? So I did also film a whole video where I talked to you guys about my delivery. So if you wanna see that, I'll link it down below for you guys. But it wasn't bad at all. Um, and I kinda of went into it thinking like, so my sister is a labor and delivery nurse, so I've heard all the stories, I know it all. I say that, I don't know it all, but you know what I mean. Um, but 
I just went into it telling myself like this is one day. This is one day out of your life that you're going to go through extreme pain. What's the scarier thing is now you have a baby that you have to take care of for the rest of your life. <laughs> um, or at least 18 years or whatever. But yeah, I'm very lucky. I had a relatively uneventful pregnancy and an uneventful delivery. Um, it was quick. It was, you know, I was able to, to deliver vaginally. So that was nice. And honestly, it wasn't horrible. Was it great? No. Was it pleasant? Definitely not. Do I want to go through it every single day? Heck no. But it wasn't like traumatizing. Like I would do it again. Next question is epidural, which I already talked about and challenging thing about being a new mom. So I talked about this a little bit already, but the lack of sleep and then I think also just the complete shift in routine, your life is going to be totally different, totally different. Even if you prep and you try and you think it's going to be the same, it's not going to be the same. Your life is going to be completely different. And I think that was the hardest thing for me was coming to terms with my life is different now. I have a new normal. I have a new life. I have, it's just different. And, um, that was really, really, really hard for me to get used to come to terms with, accept all of the above. Um, so that's the hardest thing. Oh my God. There's so many more questions. Okay. I'm going to try to answer these fast. Favorite diapers so far, Pampers swaddlers. I've also tried the Costco brand diapers. Don't like them. They leak loves. They leak um, I like Pampers Swaddlers, which is what they gave us in the hospital, so we just kind of stuck with it. Next question is, are you going back to work after baby? I am due in one month. I'm nervous to go back after work. This is, ugh, I'm nervous to go back to work too. I think I'm really lucky because the company I work for gives me 26 weeks of maternity leave, so I have basically six months off to spend with my baby, which I'm so, so, so lucky. I am nervous to go back to work, but I am going back to work. Next question is, why were you induced? I talked about this in my labor and delivery video, but basically I was induced because I had signs of preeclampsia. I was never fully diagnosed with preeclampsia, but I had high blood pressure and high protein in my urine, which those two together are like red flags for um, preeclampsia. So that is why I was induced. Luckily, nothing ever turned into like full-blown preeclampsia, but they just wanted to prevent it from turning into full-blown preeclampsia. Next question is, how have you been emotionally postpartum? Are you able to sleep when Lincoln sleeps or do you find yourself staring at him in fear? Um, I, I have gotten better at this and I don't stare at him in fear as much. Uh, but for the first like few weeks, I was terrified of SIDS and I still am. It's still so scary. Um, we have the Owlette Smart, Owlette Smart Sock, which is nice. It helps because it tracks his oxygen and his heart rate. And it sends like an alert to your room um, and your phone if something drops below the normal. So that helps a ton. But um, it's so hard. The first couple of nights before we put his smart sock on him, I remember just staring at him like, oh my God, is he breathing? And like looking and like, okay, I don't want to touch him because I don't want to wake him up. But like, is he breathing? And it is terrifying. I'm not even going to lie. Um, I've gotten a lot better at it. And in fact, my sleep in general has gotten a lot better and his sleep has gotten a lot better, which has helped immensely. Um, but I think that's just a new mom thing. I think you're just terrified at first and you stare at your baby <laughs> because you're so, so, so nervous. But I was really bad at sleeping when he sleeps. In fact, even now, I'm really bad at napping when he naps. I find myself constantly wanting to do other things like laundry and film videos and, you know, just the list of things that you do that you wanna do, um, clean the house and cook dinner, all those things. And then as far as the question about um, how have you been emotionally postpartum, I talked about this already in this video many times, but I do have postpartum depression and I am dealing with it and it's hard. It's really hard, especially those first two weeks. I thought it was just baby blues. And in fact, I think when I answered this question on Instagram, I said something like it was just baby blues. I got over it, but it came back and it's normal. And I think, you know, I think it's becoming less taboo to talk about it, but it's hard. It, I, I didn't deal well with it at all, to be honest. It was really difficult. It was hard for me to enjoy the happy moments. It was hard for me to adjust to the lifestyle change. And I say that fully knowing and fully understanding that I was also so happy. Like 
I'm so happy that I had this baby and I couldn't, you know, I'm a mom and, and everything is great and it's, it's being, it's rewarding and you know, all those things, but it is hard. Um, I think what helped the most was talking to people. So I talked to my best friends about it. And luckily I have family and friends who were checking up on me and making sure that I was okay and constantly calling and texting and all of that. Um, but I also talked to a counselor as well and that really helped. And my husband, he's been amazing. He's been a huge rock. He's been so helpful. And I honestly don't really know how I would have gone through any of this without him. So I think just talking to him and understanding that all of those emotions are normal, I think is starting to help me get over it. And then just accepting and adjusting to your new normal life also really, really helps a lot. But um, no, I didn't adjust emotionally really well at all. And those first two weeks are insane, you guys. Like I had the baby blues and I was hormonal and emotional like no other. <laughs> no other, it was horrible. All right guys, well I'm gonna stop there because I've already been filming for 30 minutes. So we'll see how I can edit this down. But um, I'd like to film another one of these maybe at some point. So keep an eye out on my Instagram because I'll probably ask for questions there or you can leave them in this comment section down below. But I hope that you guys enjoyed and I will talk to you next time. Bye.